Simon Woodhouse's dream is to sail to France and open a floating restaurant in Paris with the boat he's just bought for one pound. He's now just got four weeks to get the boat ready and it's becoming clear just how big a task it is. They all say it can't be done. Money is tight, but he has managed to get a team of mates who know a bit about boats to help him with the restoration. If you're enthusiastic enough, almost anyone will follow you. But they will need some expert advice as they prepare to move the 30-ton boat into dry dock. And as you can see, she's losing her buoyancy, and if we're not careful, she'll just fall over. We don't want a whole one, do we? He also wants to impress some fellow chefs with his unique oh, cooking style, so he's decided to hook up with John Burton Race, who knows a thing or two about French cuisine. This trip isn't about being a clever cook with, you know, three Michelin stars. This is about simplistic, beautiful ingredients. So, if Simon has any chance of transforming this boat into a floating restaurant, he's going to have to pull out all the stops, and the pressure is most definitely mounting. Simon may be an enthusiastic amateur when it comes to boat restoration, but as a chef, how will the French take to his cooking style? I heard so much about French cooking that it really is a pressure shot to turn up in France on the top of a boat and um, try and take money off these people for this silly Englishman's food. So today he's decided to make a trip out to Bone in France to prepare for his impending journey. He's here to meet three Michelin star chef John Burton Race, who spent a year in France getting back to basics. It is about the food. For me, the journey is, is about the food and what I can learn along the way, but it's also about the, uh, the culture. Right. Um, trying to understand why it's so good here and maybe understanding why perhaps it's not in England. Why have I bothered to come here? Because it must be good. So that's how are you going to find out about that? I really want to get to grips with the, the food chain. I can either knock on a chef's door I can knock on the shepherd's door. Right. And I think... So you want to see it on, on the, the journey. Hoof. I want to see, yeah, on the hoof, on the land. Yeah. I want to find a shepherd with his feet, as they say, embedded in the soil around here. I think it's a good way of doing it, and that's the learning curve as well. From the raw ingredient, the base product, lamb, as you say, on the hoof, and follow the whole thing through to the finished plate on the boat. Right. That's fantastic. So many cooks nowadays, chefs, call them what you want, um, do things but have no idea why they're actually doing it. They're doing it because they've been taught that way. This way, it's more like the artist learning how to apply the paint to the picture. He's starting at the very beginning to learn at base roots how to get to the finished plate. And Simon's got a little surprise for John. He is going to cook him the perfect spring lunch. The only problem is what to cook. I do love mushrooms. The trouble is I'm loving everything. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk into the meat area of fish and I'm going to get some base ingredients for the plate and then I'm going to fill it up with the stuff that's around here. It's a way to do it. I don't know which way to go. I mean, there's rabbits there, there's quails, capons, duck legs and I'm thinking confit because it's one of my absolute favourite things to cook. Like a child in a sweet shop, Simon is a bit overwhelmed. The question is, will it be meat or fish? I mean, these are all killer fish to me. These are all just what I want to work with, monkfish, love it. But they're nice fat fillets, and they're probably going to win. Then I just spotted this brill. John Dory fillets, absolutely love them. Not many people use them. But the red mullet are lovely too, and for lunch, for lunch dish, red mullet, it's just a killer. I'm now split 50-50, monkfish, John Dory, sautéed herbs, John Dory fillets, simple, lovely. But then there's the monkfish and all those herbs as well, I see. With Simon hopefully making the right decision, it's time to head back to the kitchen. How are you doing? The plan is to cook something simple that will show off the flavours of the region. So what have we got then? Got to stick to your first principles on this. This is what I could buy at a market yesterday. This is not the flashiest food, it's not chefy food, it's simple, simple, simple. Confit duck leg, absolute classic. Um, simple fish, John Dory, one of my favourites. Grilled. The accompanying vegetables are these beans that I bought yesterday. These darn little potatoes, they're just small and they taste great. And then the big hitter is these chirols, or little summer chanterelles to me. Dessert, these are in season, so use them. These are in season, so I'm using those. And the first of the, the berries are coming out. Simon's got plenty to think about under the watchful eyes of John Burton Race. I'm looking for 
his ingredients. I'm looking to see that if he has chosen good produce. And I'd like to be able to have something that was completely unfussed about with. <laughs> Am I nervous about being judged by someone like John? Well, every chef's always going to be, look, you just got to keep yourself focused on your own points of view and your own principles. I think this is simple fare. That's what I'm about. With that in mind, Simon goes about preparing John's three-course meal. Good heavy down, and the ducks are going to go straight in there. This is walnut oil I'm using here. Good sea salt, peppercorns in there with garlic, thyme, and it's a long, slow cook. Just putting a plate on there helps keep the ducks immersed. Stops and drying out. The acidity of Simon's sour vegetables should take away the fattiness from the duck. And this is going to be vinegar, water and sugar. That's cider vinegar. And John Dory is one of my favourite little fish fillets. The texture of the flesh is, to me, just delightful. It's, it's kind of... It's got a springiness to it and a shine on it. It's almost like eating a big flat prawn. It's also a very delicate fish. Simon's skillful filleting will hopefully bring out the best cut. OK, this is my potatoes and beans and fennel. This is to go with my fish. For dessert, you can't get any simpler Being than in-season nectarines. And, and black red currants berries. made into his own fruit compote. Very, very simple. Almost 50% sugar. I just want to spike up the flavour bits. That's rosemary going in there. And the last, just to give it a little kick, just a little thumbful of cognac. I'll just lift the flavour. Bring it on, chap. The question is, will Simon's choice of produce and ingredients impress a three-time Michelin star chef? It looks delicious. Dig in. So what did you do with this? Did you put it in salt first? No, I um, actually used walnut oil rather than dove fat. i tell you what it is, and I think you've hit the, the nail on the head here with this one, because it's lighter. Mm -hmm. And it's not greasy, is it? I was actually looking to lighten it a bit, and the walnut oil is something I use a lot. Yeah. So far, so good. John seems to be tucking in. Next up is the delicate John Dory with Simon's creamed Girol mushrooms. Come on, Simon, where's the main course? At the moment, I am bewildered. How come this guy, who's only been cooking for about three and a half minutes, and I've been cooking all my life and I'm a lot older than him, no, Marginally older than him, <laughs> um, can cook so well. It looks as though Simon's back to basics has won John over, but the proof is in the pudding. Actually, to be fair, Simon, it's not just about the ingredients; it's what you do with them. And yeah, you know, you keep saying you've done it simple and you haven't done much with it, but you've done done it well. And so I have to say, it's a really lovely meal. I really enjoyed it, and um, thank you for that, John. Thank you. I think once the French have tried what he does, once they get to speak to him and learn about his passion, he's probably going to be more appreciated and more accepted than I possibly ever would be. But what he has to do, because otherwise it won't be anything different, is he has to put the Simon style to things. He has to put his own style into that classic recipe. With Simon relieved he's managed to impress one of the best chefs in the country, it's back to the UK to manoeuvre his precious floating kitchen into the boatyard so they can start the renovation work. For this job, Simon is going to need expert advice, so he's asked Ian McGilvney, a professional boat builder, to help guide Water Lily into dry dock. We've got to take the boat out into the tide, and the tide's going to be running up the river fairly strongly. Um, and if we're not careful, um, the boat will do what they call a ferry glide. Give us a pull on this line, guys. Yeah. Could just zoom straight across the river and perhaps hit the bank on the other side. <laughs> Quick again. Yeah. With all hands on deck, they managed to get Water Lily pointing in the right direction. You've got to be careful we don't whack that iron. Slow it down, Rob. Slow it down. Slow it down. But now Simon's ingenuity is about yeah. to be put to the test. 
Water Lily has had to be placed on a wooden cradle to go into the boatyard. Oh, she's a stunner. But with the tide fast running out, no one's sure if the cradle will hold. We've got to worry about now propping her up before she falls over. If Water Lily collapses, there'd be no way back, and the tide would engulf her. Inch by inch, they ease her in. But after a momentary scare, Water Lily is finally pulled into the safety of the boatyard. Now Simon and his friends are facing a punishing schedule of 16 hours a day, seven days a week, just to have a fighting chance of getting her ready in time. She seems so far away from being that, that vision, the shining hull and the, um, the polished deck, the Parisians sitting on board to eat food. She seems a long way away, but... Um, I suppose I have to keep playing that, that little bit of footage in my mind to, to get me there. Next time on The Floating Kitchen, with time running out, the restoration of the hull starts to go horribly wrong. Anyone who thinks that this has really got half a chance right, is a lunatic. Simon finds out there is a serious problem with the engine. Everything seems to be going wrong. And Simon's dream of launching The Floating Kitchen hangs in the balance.